while since we've done a vlog and um, yeah, we have the baby and... Uh, we have a new look going on called the We Haven't Slept in a Few Hours look. We have the pajama look on. We are not getting dressed for this. And we know that you've all been patiently waiting to see our son. And here he is. This is... Nathan. Yes, Nathan William Edward Nutt. He was born on December 9th at 10.15 p.m. and he weighed 16 pounds, 15 ounces. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about our delivery story and um, what what we kind of went through and all that fun stuff. Okay. So basically what happened is on December 9th we decided to do our maternity photo shoot because we had been planning on doing it prior to December 9th and we never really got around to doing it. So when we did it um, during the middle of it, I started to have a lot of pain, and what I was thinking were Braxton Hicks. They turned out that it wasn't Braxton Hicks, and during the photo shoot, I kept keeling over and saying, I can't, I can't do this. Yeah, it was awkward. I was leaking, it was a mess. So, we ended up going downstairs, and he was like, you know what, maybe we should try and lay down and ha just, just call it a night. So... When we did that, after we decided to call it a night, um, we had gone to bed and I just, I couldn't get comfortable, I was in a lot of pain and so Joe was like, alright, you know what, this isn't Braxton Hicks, we need to go to the hospital, this, this isn't happening. So we went to the hospital and because my dad had come at about, because I called my dad at about 4.35 o'clock and I said, Dad, I think I'm in labor. I think my water broke. You need to come. So he came and picked us up and took us over to the hospital. Now, basically, what happened was at the hospital, they had taken us into triage and uh, they had come in and said, they they hooked me up to a bunch of machines and said, his, his heart's good, everything's good, but we're not sure if your water has broken. So when the OBG came in and she ended up taking a look, she says, your water has broken, but it broke the size of a pinhole and it was from the top instead of the bottom and that's why it was just trickling out. So she said that the only way you can make, you can make labor go faster is you can induce labor by either we can admit you or you can go home and try and walk it off and everything. So we went home and we went to sleep, right? That's right. And after that, after hey, we, we, the, the after we had um, went home and gone to sleep and everything. Um, and we were really tired. Yeah. We were beat. Very. I had bent over after I had slept for a little bit and I felt him drop. And he felt, it felt like there was a bowling ball down between my legs and I couldn't walk properly and I knew that that was it, like that was the time. So Joe had called his mom and said that we need to go to the hospital, we need to see what's going on. So we went back to triage where they said I was two, only two centimeters dilated but they decided to admit us. So we got into our room, which was a beautiful room. And after going into the room, um, I was, the, the pain was, I mean, it wasn't unbearable, but it was a lot of pain at first. And I went and sat in the shower and tried to, you know, keep the pain from being excruciating, just the most relaxing thing yeah. for me. So I had gone into the shower and Joe just felt like there was nothing he could do to make it better. He just, he was at a standstill. So by this point, they were like, okay, well, in order to make the pain go away a little bit, we'll give you morphine. So they put me on morphine, which did nothing. About half an hour later, they had come. The nurse had come in and said, "When would you like to have your epidural?" And both Joe and I, anytime now. That'd be great. Yeah, give it to her. Yeah, <laughs> he knew that I was in so much. He walked in and looked at me, and he, it was just he knew how much pain I was in. So after the epidural, everything went smoothly for the first bit. We got to sleep for a bit. The nurses came in every once in a while to check on the baby's heart rate and everything like that. And they said that my I wasn't dilating fast enough, so they had put me on a drug called oxytocin. Now that's to speed up labor. Now, 
they put me on that and for a couple hours we got to sleep after they hooked me up to that and which was which was pretty awesome so <laughs> when they hooked me up to that everything was good we got to sleep for a little bit longer and then we had alarms go off and some nurses came in and said that his heart rate was dropping we have to flip you onto your side and they did that a few times and then said you know what we can't get his heart rate regulated we need to take a look so before before anything they said that it wasn't his that he wasn't that I wasn't going I wasn't going into labor like labor wasn't speeding up fast enough for me so they said well you we have we may have to give you um, Holy moly. He's, he's eating it fast eh? <laughs> Go Before anything, they said, you know, you may have to have a C-section. You're not dilating fast enough. You might want to think about that, and that might have to be part of your birth plan. Yeah. Which was really frightening for both of us because it wasn't part of our birth plan. We wanted to have a natural birth. She, she was making it sound like she was really like... This could be a real thing, uh, C-section could be happening. Yeah, and they were basically getting themselves prepared for it. And then she's like, well, let me take a look before anything. So, she ended up taking a look to see if I had dilated any more. And basically when she took a look, she said, you're 10 centimeters and his head is right there, you need to push. Now, like, right out of the blue, was like, yeah. what? I hadn't had a chance to call my mom and say, I think I'm going into labor. I had called her prior, but they said that labor could be up to six hours and longer. So I was like, I told my mom, I was like, I'll call you if things start to speed up. Well, they sped up a little too quick, and before we knew it, um, I started pushing at. Give me second. I started pushing at 10 o'clock, and he was born at 10:15. I had about three to four pushes before he was out. It was insane. It was insane. But this is the thing that was insane. I'm just, we're sitting there looking at each other. She's talking about a C-section, saying that this thing that helps die later isn't working anymore. We're looking at each other like, what the heck, a C-section? She says, let's go look and let me take a peek. And then she says, oh, you're having the baby now. It was really freaky. It was like a, an emotion up and down. Yeah, if you guys actually watched the video prior to this, his, his delivery vlog, the actual birth vlog, you'll see when she asks me, you look freaked out, I say yes. Yeah. I was terrified because I was not expecting it to happen no, that, that rapidly. That rapidly. I was no. expecting my mom to be there, uh, a few family members to be there. I was expecting it to go a little bit slower, but it kind of came out of nowhere. We talked to the nurse before and she was like, oh, it takes an hour to dilate, uh, every hour to dilate one You dilate centimeter. one centimeter every hour. Every hour, thank you. So yeah. uh, she dilated uh, 10 centimeters in an hour. Mm -hmm. 10 centimeters. I went from... Uh, it was three and a half centimeters. I went from three and a half to ten centimeters in an hour. But I will tell you, she did a great job. I, I was really proud of you. Thank you. I mean, out of uh, like I've seen the other, my other two boys being born, and uh, yeah, you were a tough cookie. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Let me say though, giving birth to him was nothing compared to the contractions that I had felt. I felt like I was getting stabbed. Like I don't, I don't mean to scare anybody who's having or pregnant or anything like that. Everyone's different. Some people are able to have less intense contractions. For me, it was intense. It felt like I was getting stabbed in the pelvis. Oh, I, and, and on top of it, I just want to say, I don't ever remember crying at my other two boys uh, when they were born. I was bawling. He was a he was a train wreck. I was Nathan. just so happy. I was so embarrassed. I was covering myself. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he said, "Don't look at me." Um, it was beautiful. It was, and you know, Nathan being born, it didn't. It, when he when I was giving birth to him, I didn't feel a thing. It felt like something was just pressing up against my leg. It felt like something was pushing against the inner thigh of my leg. That was all I could feel. In like three or four pushes, he was out, and they had set him on top of me. And I think that was the moment when I realized that, holy crap, Yeah. we just had a baby. We're taking him home. This is it. This is the end. I yeah. think that's part of the And we stayed there for two nights afterwards. We did. We could have stayed only for one, but he wouldn't, sorry, he wouldn't have been uh, discharged until midnight the next day. And there's no point in going no. home with a newborn. I stayed there the two nights I slept yeah. there. And we got some helpful tips on like, 
breastfeeding and how to change a diaper and what it's going to be like with the meconium and yeah. you know bas just basic things he got a hearing test he got his eyes checked everything like that he's he was a healthy baby so yeah we were small. blessed for that small. yeah he was he, well he was about average average size but small for his yeah. for his weight i mean he looked very small yeah um but he was healthy and that's what we were blessed to have is that he's very healthy and uh, like um, I'm thinking through this, I might have some pictures and stuff in the video. Okay. So, well, hopefully, if you've already seen, if you're watching this, watch me talk. Hopefully, I just threw some stuff in this, and um, you know, we're gonna do a couple more videos. Yeah, too. I actually want to do a it's couple videos, one on breastfeeding because we've had some ups and some downs, and anybody who's struggling, which I struggled with mastitis i struggled with cracked and bleeding nipples yeah. i struggled with everything so we're and gonna we be can, doing we can do also vlogs on crib on the on yes we're gonna do a vlog on getting him on a bedtime routine Small. it's and been a nightmare but we're getting there yeah we are tired like the, the the reason we haven't had the time to do a vlog in two months I, like i've watched these programs and they're walking around every day with a camera god bless and them I, you know how <laughs> do they do it every day just insane I mean we got no sleep I'm not pulling out no camera every day and doing a vlog it's just not gonna happen <laughs> it's not you know what I mean I can do one maybe once a week I wish we could have done a vlog sooner but you know with a newborn everything's very unpredictable so you yeah. just you never know with what's gonna come and we really wanted to get to he's, know Nathan he's quiet now he's quiet now but he's, he's putting he's on an act he knows people are watching putting on an act. <laughs> he knows the cameras on him but we wish we could have done one sooner, but we want to get to know Nathan and we wanted to get to know how he was and what his personality is yeah. before we could put him in front of a camera. Yeah. So. That's well, it? That's about it until our next vlog. All right, everybody. We're going to go take a nap. <laughs> we're going to go take a nap? No, we're not. No, we're not. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, here come the tears. I'm sorry. Did I say we're going to take a nap? Oh, uh, we said we're going to go watch movies or something. Yeah. All right. Anyways, take care, guys. Bye. Bye.